Space is a dangerous place. It seems like wherever you go, something tries to get rid of you. So what if you wanted to go up there without a spacesuit? What's good is that your body probably wouldn't explode. Your skin is strong and stretchy enough to deal with all that pressure. You wouldn't freeze right away either. In space, the only way for your body to lose heat is through radiation, which happens very slowly for a relatively cool object like a human body. You would eventually get cold, but it would take a while, or your fluids would evaporate. Keep your eyes closed if possible. Okay, the air would be the first emergency problem here. Your brain wouldn't be able to get oxygen, so you'd pass out within 15 seconds, and within three minutes, your brain would shut down forever. If someone rescued you within the first 30 seconds, you might only have some bruises on your skin from all the pressure changes. Hopefully, you didn't try to hold your breath before they catapulted you out there, though. In that case, the air in your lungs would cause them to rupture, which, again, wouldn't be a happy end. But here's a spot where no one would be able to save you, the center of the galaxy. Each galaxy has a supermassive black hole at its center, and these are even worse than you might expect. They eat up a bunch of matter and release an enormous amount of energy. The largest of these gobblers and the hungriest among them are something we call quasars. Well, to be precise with the relations here, quasars actually contain supermassive black holes that eat everything in their way. And these quasars are some of the most energetic space objects that we know about. When something falls into a quasar, it gets really hot and shoots outward at very high speeds because of the strong radiation force. Quasars can deceive you if you try to observe them through a telescope because you might think you're looking at stars. Astronomers also named them quasi-stellar radio sources because the signals were coming from one place similar to how it goes with a star. But quasars, of course, have a stronger light. They can shine much brighter than a galaxy with billions of stars. But this same radiation that makes them so bright is not such good news for the galaxies where they're located because these guests are not very polite and they're slowly ripping them apart. Okay, maybe not that slowly. As a black hole eats matter, hot gases circles around it and produces very intense radiation, which then creates a quasar. Scientists use the famous Hubble Space Telescope to study 13 insanely powerful quasar outflows of radiation. This energy can travel at speeds over 40 million miles per hour and reach temperatures of billions of degrees. One particular outflow of radiation they studied got faster and went from nearly 43 million miles per hour to about 46 million miles per hour in only three years. The energy these outflows carry is several hundreds of times stronger than all the light our entire Milky Way galaxy emits. And all this hot gas is moving so fast that it can really cause a lot of damage to the host galaxy. It rushes through the galaxy like a massive tsunami, faster than anything we've previously discovered in space. At the same time, it's pushing apart all the potential material that could get together and form new stars. In just one year, this quasar wave can push away as much matter as hundreds of suns and create spectacular fireworks. I mean, the light show would be cool, but that seems like an awful lot of wasted material. These things we're discovering can really help us answer the question that's been bothering us for such a long time. Why do big galaxies stop growing after they reach a certain mass? No wonder when the quasars don't even allow new stars to be born. How rude! I mean, a black hole itself can't destroy the whole galaxy. When a star gets too close, a black hole will tear it apart with its strong gravity. This creates a lot of energy and a bright flare too. And even though we can't really see a black hole itself, scientists can at least study these flares. They can measure their energy more accurately than ever before because they look at how the surrounding dust absorbs and re-emits the light from the flares. It's actually similar to how echoes work. Scientists have also used NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory to study more than 100 galaxies and realized these black holes are consuming thousands of stars so they could gain more weight. There are different types of black holes. We call smaller ones stellar mass black holes. They're about 5 to 30 times the mass of our sun. 
On the other end of the scale, there are supermassive black holes that nest in the centers of large galaxies and weigh millions or even billions of times the mass of the Sun. And recent research tells us there are intermediate mass black holes which lie in between the two extremes. And it seems these intermediate black holes could be small black holes that had been eating lots of stars, becoming bigger. The special buffet a black hole just can't resist is when there's a dense cluster of stars in the center of a galaxy. Yup. So yeah, black holes are mean fellas, but there's still no way they could eat a whole galaxy. A black hole's gravity is just not strong enough, unless there's a quasar around, making its force stronger. Don't worry though, quasars are usually billions of light years away from us. That means we see them as they were billions of years ago, because light takes time to travel. And light years represent the amount of time necessary for that. It's great that we can study quasars, not because they're pretty cool, terrifying, but still cool. But because with their help, we can learn more about how our own galaxy formed and developed. Quasars are part of a larger group of objects called active galactic nuclei. This family tree also includes safer galaxies and blazars. These are not as awesome as their cousins, but okay, we'll give them a short introduction. Seyfert galaxies may look normal in regular images, but they emit a lot of infrared radiation, radio energy, and X-rays. Basically, they're similar to quasars but release less energy, and they have supermassive black holes at their centers too. Copycat! Blazar and quasar sound pretty similar, huh? Still, they're a bit different. The story of a blazar starts in a familiar way. At the center of a galaxy, there's a giant black hole surrounded by a disk of dust, gas, and debris that spins really fast. As the material in the disk falls towards the black hole, its gravitational energy can end up being converted to light. This makes the center of these galaxies very bright, and we call them active galactic nuclei. Some of these active galactic nuclei are not fine with just shining bright, so they shoot out jets of material that nearly reach the speed of light. This is a quasar. But when a galaxy happens to turn so that the jets point towards our home planet, it's what we call a blazar. And yes, it's like Earth is staring down the barrel of a cannon. Quasars and blazars emit jets of particles pointing towards us or in our direction. Scientists believe Seyfert galaxies are different because they emit jets pointing away from us, which is why it's harder to detect them. These jets from blazars can release particles with lots of energy that we call neutrinos. A couple of years ago, scientists discovered a single neutrino that traveled from a supermassive black hole in a blazar located about 4 billion light years away. This was so exciting because we've captured neutrinos from only three cosmic sources so far. Our sun, a supernova, which was a powerful explosion that happened in a nearby galaxy in 1987, and now from the blazar. 